Now let's look at length contraction using the Lorentz transformation. So how do we measure length? Well, let's consider a rod that is at rest in this frame S prime. This frame and the rod are both moving at speed u to the right relative to frame S. The length of the rod, this is very important, in the x direction, which is what we're measuring, is the distance between the ends. So it's the distance between the two ends measured at the same time. And that is very important, as we will see. So to find the length of the rod measured in S prime, the length is D prime, it is the difference between X2 prime and X1 prime. So we measure in S prime the length of the rod as the distance between the position of the end and the position of the beginning of the rod. Because this rod is at rest in S prime, the distance measured in that frame is the rest length, so the length of the rod at rest. Now referring to this requirement that the length of the rod is the distance between the ends measured at the same time, we need to consider that the measurement of the beginning is event 1 and the measurement at the end is event 2. And these two events are done at the same time, so the time that this first measurement is taken is T1 prime and that is done at the same time as the measurement at the end of the rod T2 prime. So let's try something. Let's see how to measure the rod's length in frame S. Well, the distance D between the beginning and the end of the rod is the length D measured in S. And that is going to be the difference between the positions X1 and X2 of the beginning and end of the rod as measured in S. So it's X2 and X1. And let's use the inverse Lorentz transform to find X2 and X1 in terms of the primed quantities. So the first is gamma X2 prime plus UT2 prime. The other is gamma into X1 prime plus UT1 prime. So continuing, we have gamma. Then we have an X2 prime minus X1 prime. Gamma is a common factor. And then we can take out a factor gamma u and t2 prime minus t1 prime. And since t2 prime is equal to t1 prime, this is equal to zero. So what we have is that this is zero. So we have gamma and x2 prime minus x1 prime is d prime. And d prime is equal to d naught. So the result is that d is equal to gamma d naught. But wait a minute, that is wrong. That is not length contraction. That is in fact length dilation. So what is the correct approach? Remember that the length of the rod must be measured by taking events at the beginning and the end at the same time. So let's suppose the measurement here we call event 1 at the beginning of the rod and event 2 is here at the end of the rod. And this marks then a it happens at a certain time t1 x1 and this happens at a time t2 x2 and in s we must have t1 equals t2 and that's what we have not done in our first attempt let's look again at the importance of measuring the length of the rod using events at the beginning and the end measured at the same time if for example the beginning of the rod were measured at an earlier time. So that was the beginning of the rod. And then the rod moves on. So it's moved on to this position. And then we measure the end of the rod at that time. We would be measuring that distance between two events at different times, which would certainly not be the length of the rod. Let's proceed with the correct procedure to measure the length of the rod in frame S. So let these two events E1 and E2 for convenience be at the time T1 equals T2 equals naught. So if we have T1 equals naught, then using the inverse Lorentz transformation, we have zero is equal to gamma times T1 prime plus UX1 prime divided by C squared. So we can solve now for T1 prime to get T1 prime is equal to minus UX1 prime divided by C squared. Similarly, for T2 being zero, we go through the same procedure and we have T2 prime is equal to minus UX2 prime divided by C squared.
So finally, we can find the length d. d is equal to the difference x2 minus x1. We have already established that that is equal to gamma into x2 prime minus x1 prime plus gamma u times t2 prime minus t1 prime and that is equal to gamma times d prime that's the x2 prime minus x1 prime plus gamma u and now we substitute these values that we have so the one is minus u x2 prime over c squared and the other is minus minus, so that's plus u x1 prime divided by c squared. So we can take out a common factor gamma, and then we have d prime plus, and then there's a u squared here, and a c squared. So we can write that as u squared divided by c squared times minus x2 prime plus x1 prime. So we rewrite that as gamma into d prime minus u squared upon c squared and this here is now x2 prime minus x1 prime and that we recognize as d prime so we can continue to write gamma and then because this is d prime we can take that out as a common factor and we have left 1 minus u squared upon c squared and that we recognize as 1 upon gamma squared so we have gamma d prime divided by gamma squared and we end up with d prime upon gamma and d prime is d naught so we have d naught upon gamma so that is the correct formula for length contraction which is d is equal to d naught upon gamma